Hello, welcome back again. Uh, this is the second Company of Heroes uh, battle comp stomp I'm going to be playing today. It's from the Soviet perspective. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to be on steps, another six to eight player map. We've got seven set up, as uh, if you've watched my first video, uh, I'm not very good uh, against uh, even numbers and I'd probably lose. I may do that one day just so you can see how badly I am uh, playing this game at times. But today, yep, Soviets, and I'm going to be using the counter attack tactics. This is probably my favourite one of the Russians, because it's got shock troops. Um, I'm not too bad about recon overflight or the more of a Russia ability, but then later on you get the 203mm howitzer and the absolutely fantastic looking KV-1 heavy tank to the field. So, uh, away we go. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, Steps is quite a large map, uh, even compared, I think, to Face Off at Rostov. This is probably one of the biggest maps. It's, uh, I think it was the original 6 to 8 player map that they had in the game at launch. Uh, and it's one, it's one of my favourites. It's mainly because you've got this uh, big section in the middle with the fuel point. It usually ends up becoming basically a, a, a dead zone. There's, all, there's vehicles all over the place, infantry dying left, right and centre. Uh, and it's it's where I usually try and run my units first to grab that and uh, get into the fights early, get some XP so I can start rapidly bringing in uh, better units and using some of my overcalling abilities, especially uh, troops like uh, shock troops. Um, and obviously once you, once you get that howitzer and you can sort of set it up in this area of the map, you can just start shelling the base at range, which uh, hopefully you're going to be seeing. Uh, these videos are also going to be a bit smaller than the others. Uh, they were in two parts at 20 minutes each. This one I'm going to try and break up into several uh, parts, about 10 minutes each, roughly. Maybe a little later. So let's uh, let's get our conscripts. You need something built? Uh, combat engineers, very similar to the pioneers. Obviously, they're in a slightly larger unit, and they are armed with. Uh, MP40s, these guys have only got moist in the Gantz. Uh, I very rarely use them for combat. I very rarely use them for capping locations. Fresh conscripts have arrived. Oh, where's my conscripts? There we go. Right, so it's randomly decided to start us on this side now. Let's just rush out, grab that point, and get another unit on the way. Because conscripts, there's a good number of them, but what tends to happen is they they die rather quickly. Um, against pretty much any any resistance. Some of the commander uh, trees will actually give you the ability uh, to upgrade them with Papashas, which gives them a slightly higher survivability rate and they can do more damage at close range. But yeah, they're, they're not really a unit you should be relying on. Even high rank versions like rank 2 or 3, uh, which would be the 2 or 3 stars, yeah, they're, they're still not going to last very long. Even even then, they're probably the weakest fighting unit after your, your basic construction units uh, in the game. They can build a few defensive structures, but yeah, they're, they're not something you rely on. They, basically, this is what they're good for, running out and capturing locations uh, very quickly and giving you some kind of uh, quick resource boost before you have to start focusing on building better uh, troop types. Uh, generally... Penal battalions are probably the next logical unit to go to, although I, I myself rarely build them. Oh, and we're already engaged. Ah, but sorry, it's pioneers who aren't as bad. And well, they're massively outnumbered. <laughs> they've got three. <laughs> they've got three conscript units firing on them, and my other one is about to get involved. Four conscript units firing on them. And as you can see, I mean, just from that brief exchange of SMG fire, this unit's already taken a bit of damage. Which just shows that in a one-on-one -on -one fight, even pioneers would probably give them a bit of a pasty. Okay, while they're capping, we're going to try and uh, we're going to try and shore up these defences. Let's create a little um, try and create a little defensive point. That's got cover from most directions, hopefully. Yeah, that'll, that'll do. It's not perfect, but it should be enough that the troops can hide back. Well, and I mean, the Germans will eventually bring up uh, mortars, um, 
but in the short term it works. No, 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 come on, build that wall. What do you it have is for us? us? We must move! Yeah, you can always use a uh, Ura, which uh, gives them a slight boost. Ow! Yes, comrade! We must fall back! And that's probably the biggest threat to uh, conscripts, is the fact that they have uh, a high susceptibility to grenadier. Rifle grenades. As you can see, damage isn't isn't exactly high. I've already lost one member of this of this squad. And I'll probably lose two before one of theirs dies. Oh. I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying conscripts are, are terrible in any way. It's just they they will they will die relatively quickly. I. The, I can see the use of them. I can see the benefit of them. I do. I I kind of root for them because they're kind of the underdog of, it, of any of your forces. Now I'm gonna have to pull back. Can't sit there and fight that. Uh, let's see. What have we got here? I have the penal battalion. We have a sniper. Yeah, uh, let's get a, let's get a armored car. That's always good. You need something demolished. Uh, what else can we build? Support weapon, company. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, as I was saying, the Russians uh, are more aggressively focused in their gameplay style, uh, where the Germans have to escalate the operations to unlock the extra buildings. Basically, these act in a more traditional uh, RTS manner that you just build the different structures in turn to unlock the next one, uh, which does give the Russians the ability to uh, very rapidly expand their um, their combat capabilities. Let's, uh, let's stick them in the vehicle and. Is it? Come on, they haven't actually capped the central point, so. This gives us an opportunity to get them over there and we can rapidly get this squad uh, down here. There you go, this is, this is a penal battalion. They were a bit more resilient, do, they do a bit more damage and they are equipped with uh, far more deadly weaponry, uh, flamethrowers. For a start, um, and it does have the downside that a random critical hit can actually hit the tank of the flamethrower and uh, basically immolate most of the unit. Now uh, that you didn't see that happen, though, I was kind of hoping he was going to get a stray bullet that was going to kill him like that, but you know, you can't always get lucky. Uh, M3 scout cars. Uh, this again, this is another uh, U.S. Lend lease unit that for some reason they decided to give. Uh, give the Russians. Uh, I'm not quite sure why they did this. Um, again, it's not like the Russians were bereft of scout cars. They, they actually had several uh, sub variants of this, of that kind of weapon and vehicle type um, in the BA series. It's a good early vehicle, though. Um, it's it's probably one of the things that led to a lot of complaints about uh, the Russians being overpowered. Uh, you can see why. I mean, you can. This this isn't the most resilient vehicle. I mean, small arms fire will damage it, and it doesn't have a lot of health. But in the early stages, being able to actually roll out a vehicle, yeah, as you can see, I mean, Panzerfaust and a couple of MDs take out. But being able to quickly roll out um, an armored vehicle. In such a short space of time is actually quite powerful. You need something built? Now I can immediately go into building a mechanized armor campania or a, a tankovoy battalion command, which that one will give me access to the half track and the T70 light and the T34 medium, and that gives me access to this SU76 assault, the SU85 tank destroyer, and the Katusha rocket. So you can see that the Russians can actually um, expand very very quickly and bring a lot of fire down. Now I'm just going to do this in order so I'm just going to build uh, the uh, Tankovoy uh, command instead rather than going straight to the other one, although it's probably more beneficial for me to go to the other one first. I've also got a mortar, mortar team. I One of the reasons I like this map is it's a great one for mortars because you can just sort of station them upon this hill 
and they can rain death on anything that's trying to capture the central flag. Let's try and help this MG, uh, MG unit. Bit of Ura in there, give them a slight damage buff. And they need the XP. Oh, oh, crap, a shtug. Uh, and I don't, I don't have the anti-tank upgrade. And they've got an MG, and yeah, it's not worth sticking around for this. Oh, it's okay, we've got T-34, I mean, ow. And the T-34 immediately rolls backwards, that's pretty good. It's like, oh, I'm not shit, I'm not sticking around for that. Right, here we go. We've got 80 gun over here. The Stugs are, are surprisingly resilient to, to 80 weapons fire. The Stugs can take a lot more punishment than the T-34s can. Slightly surprising for that fact. Uh, I actually thought they'd be a little bit more balanced in that regard, but just seems to be what they've done with them. There goes the mortar team. I, I can't fault them for their detail um, with the uniforms and stuff. Everything looks really good. You've got these little the mortar ammo bins on their back, even though they have an infinite number of rounds. But it, it's a nice it's a nice effect regardless. Mortars unfortunately do cause a lot of friendly fire casualties. So I'm going to get a half track now, um, mainly because there's a benefit of being able to, in the early stages at least, rock, rock around the map with two infantry units in the vehicle. Uh, but if I ever lose these uh, conscripts, I'll replace them with shock troopers instead, who are, um, as it says, they're effective at close range, uh, but they're also a lot more resilient. They they have body armor and papashas and yeah, they, I think just in in general they've got way more health. Uh, so I think I'll wrap up part one here, just as my half track comes in. So uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two.